Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada. In our previous class of condensed matter physics, we were dealing with the introduction part of ferrimagnetism. So what actually is ferrimagnetism we have understood and also its brief history. And today we will move further in the same topic of ferrimagnetism and we know that such materials are called as ferrites. And in our today's class we will be covering its classification with their structures and examples. If we look in depth we can say that classification can be based on any kind of a parameter and today we are going to classify ferrites with respect to certain parameter mainly that is based on its crystal structure. So when we are dealing with ferrites we already know what actually is a ferrite and we know that iron ore that is magnetite is an example for natural ferrite. Earlier it was known to be ferromagnetic but later on we understood that magnetite is ferrimagnetic and not ferromagnetic. So in the picture you can observe how it is going to look and the formula is Fe3O4. But chemical formula we can just write it as Fe2 plus Fe3 plus O4. So here both ferric and ferrous ions are present which are going to contribute for non-vanishing value of its magnetization. So in detail we have already dealt and today we will study the classification depending on the crystal structure that is the internal structure of the material because we know that external behavior is similar to that of a ferromagnet whereas the difference is in the internal structure. So let us see what are the different types of classes based on crystal structure. So mainly there are four types. First one is a spinel ferrite, second one is garnet, third one is orthoferrite and finally we have hexagonal ferrite. And now let us see each one in detail. So first is spinel ferrite. So if we want to understand the structure of it, we need a reference one and the structures are generally based on the structure of MgO, Al2, O3. So we can say that the spinels are a class of oxides which generally contain aluminium and another metal as here we can see magnesium. So structure of ferrites under this class are based on the structure of naturally occurring spinel on the structure of this naturally occurring spinel. So for this class the general formula will be MFE2O4 where M is a metal and the main thing here is the metal M can be replaced by any divalent metal ion and Fe3 plus ion can be replaced by any trivalent ions for example aluminium, chromium, gallium ions etc. Or even this can be replaced by a combination of divalent and tetravalent ions. So finally the balancing has to be present. So based on that different types of ions when placed here in the general formula we can get the members of this class of spinel ferrites. And another speciality is that the spinels are soft ferrites. So soft ferrite means they are having lower coercivity. So in detail we will study in later classes. For time being just remember spinel ferrites are soft ferrites. And if you want to understand about the magnetic arrangement then the magnetic alignment is mainly due to super exchange interaction as we have studied exchange interaction in our ferromagnetism here it is the similar one and the main thing that is the crystal structure can be explained based on two sublattices 
We have discussed about two subletized model during our discussion on antiferromagnetism. And here also crystal structure can be understood based on these two subletices A and B. If you consider site A and B, then these two interstitial sites, one will be tetrahedral, another one will be octahedral. So A site will be generally tetrahedral and B site will be generally octahedral. And based on the arrangement of atoms in A site and B site, spinel ferrites can be classified again into subclasses that is normal spinel and another one is inverse spinel. So that is entirely based on how your metal ions are arranged within your spinel structure. So now let us understand in detail about two, so two forms of spinel structure. First one is normal spinel structure. So under this we can say the general formula is AB2O4, A is site A, B is site B in your two subletized model. And the divalent metal ions are on sublattice A which are surrounded by four oxygen ions in tetrahedral coordination and a trivalent metal ion will be on B side which are again surrounded by six oxygen ions octahedrally. So clearly you can observe how a normal spinel structure looks. So here there will be a divalent metal ion and it is surrounded tetrahedrally by four oxygen ions whereas B side is having a trivalent metal ion at the center which is surrounded by six oxygen ions in octahedral coordination and these two are going to form the normal spinel structure which you can observe in this diagram. And for example, we have zinc ferrite. So it is an ideal example for normal spinel structure. And here we can observe that divalent metal ion zinc is occupying site A and trivalent is occupying site B according to your general formula and the crystal structure explanation. And next let us move on to the second type that is inverse spinel structure. So again general formula will remain same however site A and B are going to determine this form of spinel structure. So here divalent metal ions are going to occupy octahedral B sites and Fe3 plus metal ions are distributed equally over tetrahedral A site as well as octahedral B site. So in general the arrangement can be written like this. So Fe will be tetrahedrally occupying A site and B site will be having both Fe3 plus and the metal ion. So I hope difference between inverse and normal spinel structure is clear and that will become more clear when you look at the diagram. So how the arrangement will be within the unit cell. Another thing to remember is that majority of the ferrites are occurring in inverse spinel form and not in normal spinel form. And some of the examples are manganese ferrites and nickel ferrites. So in more detail we can understand the difference when we observe it on same slide. So normal spinel and inverse spinel or it can be understood in this form. How the tetrahedral and octahedral cavities or coordinations will be formed in case of normal and inverse spinel structure. So this is about the spinel structures or spinel ferrites and next we will move on to the garnet ferrites. So garnet is generally a mineral or we can say a very precious stone which will be in deep red color. However, how it is related here, let us see. So garnet ferrites have its chemical formula as M3Fe5O12 where M is trivalent ion it can be a rare earth ion 
such as yttrium and if we look at the unit cell structure it is having a cubic nature and each unit cell contains eight such molecules of m3 fe5 o12 so 12 plus 5 plus 3 totally 20 into 8 it will be having 160 atoms in each unit cell and if we go for the crystal structure garnet ferrites are having three types of distributions within the interstitial sites so one is dodecahedral site or which is also called as c site which is surrounded by eight oxygen ions and another one is tetrahedral and octahedral site so here fe3 plus ions are distributed over both tetrahedral and octahedral sites only the thing is there is a ratio of 3 is to 2 so if we just want to visualize the crystal structure we can understand this is a tetrahedral site octahedral and dodecahedral site so clearly this is a structure for garnet ferrite so the contribution or the cation arrangement or distribution can be observed here so m3 that will be on dodecahedral site c site then fe2 on a site fe3 on d site o12 so that is according to the chemical formula or general formula itself and if we look at its property based on the coercivity we can say that it is magnetically hard or it is a hard ferrite and these are some of the details about garnet ferrites and next let us move on to the next type of ferrite that is orthoferrites or sometimes called as orthorhombic ferrites so here the general formula is m fe o3 where m is a large trivalent metal ion like yttrium if you have some idea about ferroelectrics there we come across barium titanate b a t i o3 that is of the form a b o3 and such structures are called as perovskite structures and these orthoferrites crystallize in distorted perovskite structures with orthorhombic unit cell and that's why the name is called as orthoferrite or orthorhombic ferrite and the crystal structure looks something like this where again arrangement of atoms can be clearly observed inside your orthorhombic unit cell and the speciality of this ferrite is it shows weak ferromagnetic property and the reason for it is it is having a antisymmetric exchange interaction and if in case that is absent then the material is going to show anti ferromagnetic behavior and some are going to exhibit transition as a function of temperature in which the direction of anti ferromagnetically ordered spins means the moments and consequently also the net magnetization is going to rotate by 90 degrees so if you have understood the concept of ferromagnetism and anti ferromagnetism ferrimagnetism is very easy to understand it just means that there exist a transition temperature below which the material acts as ferrimagnetic and above it is going to be non ferrimagnetic because of the change in their moments and next let us move on to the last type of ferrite based on crystal structure that is hexagonal ferrite so based on the name itself we can understand something related to hexagonal crystal structure is coming into picture and the general formula here is m fe12 o19 where m is usually boron strontium or lead so this is the speciality of this class and the crystal structure is little bit complex because as such hexagonal system itself looks complicated because all these hexagonal or hexaferrites and its members are constructed by stacking a few building blocks in a certain order so these are something like a layers of it and 
they are going to obviously crystallize in hexagonal structure with a unique c axis so that is something like the height of the hexagonal system and a and b are coplanar and the crystal structure looks something like this where blue balls are showing the metal ion red is fe and white are oxygen so clearly we can observe a part of the hexagonal unit cell of hexaferrite and if we just look at it easily we can say these ferrites are hard ferrites so their direction of magnetization is not so easy to change or reverse so these are some of the details about the classification of ferrites on the basis of crystal structure but one thing we need to remember is that only the crystal structure is not the parameter for classification of ferrites as we have seen here we have come across soft ferrites and hard ferrites so that is also a kind of classification which is based on coercivity and our next class will be based on the classification of ferrites based on its magnetization or coercivity which is a very important parameter when studying any magnetic material so see you in our next class till then stay tuned study well practice more and thank you for watching